business or sort of you can actively get involved and sometimes somebody might say something and it's not appropriate for you to chat but you'd like to react to what they've said so maybe you want to give it a thumbs up or you might want to applaud somebody somebody says something amazing or you really want to big them up um but the problem with zoom is it's a little bit different for everybody because people are on different versions some people are on phones some people are on tablets some people are on imax with the justin timberlake cd stuck in the side of it we're all a little bit different so what we're going to do is we're going to play the thumbs up for stockport game which means that you all get to test out how to use zoom's reactions so for those of you on a desktop if you hover near the bottom you should see a picture of like a little smiley face icon with a plus. So if you press that, it should give you different options. For those of you that are using phones, if you're using an iPhone, what will happen is if you tap your screen, you should get a menu that has three dots in it. And somewhere in those three dots, it should give you the reactions option. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to play thumbs up for Stockport. Now, somebody somewhere um, will tell me if I'm taking too long. So I've created quite a few questions, but we might not get through all of them depending on timing. So can everyone see my screen? Someone give us a real life thumbs up so that I know whether you can or not. Yay. Right, so the reactions quiz, thumbs up for Stockport. Let's see how well you know Stockport. So today's trick, right. So, whoa. okay. The page down button doesn't work. So this is just what I've said about there being different versions that are available. Where you're looking for, you're looking for down here for the reactions menu. Okay. So I'm going to say something. So I'm going to give you a fact and in inverted commas about Stockport. If you think my fact is true, I want you to give it a thumbs up. If you don't think it's true, you can either react in a different way or you can just leave it blank. But the main thing is that really I'm being sneaky and making you practice using the reactions menu because that's kind of how we roll. Right, so question one. Stockport Plaza's theatre was used in the filming of hit TV series Peaky Blinders. I'm seeing some thumbs up. People think that's true. If you think it's true, go to the reactions menu and give me a thumbs up. So yeah, that one was true. So they did actually use Stockport Plaza when they were filming Peaky Blinders and it brought the middle of Stockport to an absolute standstill. So that's definitely true. Whoa. Okay. Question number two. The site of home base in Bredbury was formerly a nightclub. What do we reckon? Is that true? If it's true, give it a thumbs up. So yeah, that one was true. It was called Quaffers. And yeah, many of us will have spent many happy evenings in there drinking, dancing. And apparently back in the day, it was a pretty big venue. So you might be rolling your eyes, especially the younger members of you, but Quaffers was very much the place back in its time. Okay, next question. Tennis player and sportwear icon, Fred Perry came from Stockport. If you think that's true, give it a thumbs up. Yeah, that's true. The fact that the council have named a whole building after him is a bit of a clue that, yeah, he's one of ours. Okay, next question. Stockford House was featured in TV series Life on Mars. Are we getting a thumbs up for that one? Do you think it's true? <laughs> that one was true as well. The thing about Stockport is the Victorians built a lot of stuff and in the 50s and 60s there was a lot of building work. A bit patchy in the middle, but yeah, so when people want things that are old school, Stockport has some great venues. Claire, can I interrupt you a minute? Yeah. I, have, I haven't found um, how to, to get the thumbs up. Okay, Sarah, what's, what, are you on a laptop or are you on yeah, a... La laptop, yeah. Okay. If you hover at the bottom of your screen... Yeah. Do you see a, a, a little smiley face icon? No, <laughs> okay. I don't. Right. Well, in that case, then it might be that you don't have it on your version. But what I can do is I can have a chat with you in a bit. Yes. So okay. if you want to give me a, a physical thumbs I'll up, give you, I can yes. see if you're right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so next question. 
TV impressionist Mike Yarwood, so again, the younger members of you will be doing Who Is That? Came from Stockport. If you think that's true, give us a thumbs up. Yep, lad from Bredbury. Right. The supermarket chain Asda started in Stockport. Do we think that's true? I'm not seeing any thumbs, which is good because no, it isn't. It's from Leeds. So Stockport's good, but Asda's not one of ours. Next one. In the mid 1990s, the A6 in Stockport was the busiest traffic corridor in the UK. Do we think that's true? Am I getting any thumbs up? Actually, that one's false because it was Oxford Road, the bit that runs past Manchester Metropolitan University. And apparently it was the busiest traffic corridor in Europe, not just the UK. Which, you know, what can we say? Students, buses, main centres. So our next Stockport fact, actor and model Michelle Keegan comes from Stockport. So she's used to be in Coronation Street. She's been in Our Girl. She's married to Mark Wright. Yep, that's true. She's one of ours. Right. So the version of Pride and Prejudice that featured Colin Firth had some of it filmed in Lime Park. Is that true? Yeah, I'm seeing some thumbs up. That's one of ours as well. So, yep, that's another true one. So the last one. Stockport was used as one of the locations for the film Spider-Man. Do we think that's true? No, that one's false. It was actually the Northern Quarter in Manchester. So thank you very much for playing the uh, thumbs up for Stockport game. And hopefully most of you have had a chance to test out the reactions. I say you do get different options depending on what version you're on, depending on what device you're using. But the, the thumbs up thing seems to be quite standard. Sarah, I'll have a chat with you in oh, a bit. And I'll show I you just, where to get to it. I've just found the smiley face. Oh, brilliant. It's, it's so small. It says reactions. Yeah, that's the one. So if you click on that, hopefully you should have a thumb. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. Right, so I'm <laughs> going to stop sharing now and hand back to everyone else. Thank you so much, Claire. That was Thanks really for useful. Playing. I think I just wanted to be a game show host. I think that's really what it boils down to. <laughs> <laughs> And I would like to introduce to you, Rachel and Nigel, who run the Cherry Tree Project in Romley um, and who have some great good practice for us around collaboration of all things. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, our plan is just to share a little bit of our story um, because we hope that that links in well <laughs> with what we're here for today. It's weird a moment before Simone mentioned the very first sector connector. And it was one of the first things that I ever went to, like networking style. And I remember going there and the name on my badge was just Rachel, because at that point, the Cherry Tree Project didn't even exist. So that was turning the clock back just over two years. The Cherry Tree Project was literally just an idea that we'd had. And then in 2019, we wanted to go out into our community and we wanted to do some detached work and get to know our young people. And we wanted to create something. And at that point, St. Chad's got involved. I know Katie's in the room, so if you're in the room with her, give her a wave. Um, but St. Chad's got involved and they insured us and did all the practical stuff and supported us. And we were able to start something. Yeah, so, so it came from us saying, we want to do something. This is what we want to do. And that's where the, the, the connection came from. And at that point, the Cherry Tree Project was me and obviously Nigel, and it was the team at St. Chad's. And then in June 2019, we had a similar situation than we did at the Sector Connector. I went to the Youth Partnership meeting for the first time. I met Sasha and the R Time team for the first time. And I sat around this table with all these really, like, all these people that seemed so well established and so intelligent and, like, they really knew what they were doing and they all told their little story. And when it got to me and I had to introduce myself, I told, I, I actually said, hi, I'm, Ra I'm Rachel and I'm from Cherry. Um, because we had nothing at that point at that point we were just creating and our time came in and they worked with us and they helped us create 
just the most amazing summer ever, wasn't it? Yeah, we wanted to give the kids something. So the idea was that the kids could choose what they wanted for their summer. So we wanted to give it to the kids. The kids would give us ideas and then we got the support um, of, of our time from that. And at this point, the Cherry Tree Project was me and Nigel and St. Chad's and our time and the Romley Life Centre and together we created this amazing summer. And then in the November, we applied for the Stockport Local Fund. And at that point, we wanted to create an indoor provision. We wanted to create a project where kids could come in and that they would have the opportunity to make their own offer. They could do something in their community. Um, and they did. They had a huge Christmas party. They yeah. fed people. They... It, it, it was interesting because we had, we had a group of sort of high school kids and we said, look, what, what do you want from this? And they wanted to give something to the older people or the younger people. They didn't want to take. They wanted to give... Um, and through support from others, then they threw a Christmas party for all the younger kids. And we had a Santa there and presents and, <laughs> and a party. But it was because they'd offered that other people stepped up and then supported them. We had local supermarkets and charity shops fundraising and getting the selection boxes and hundreds of kids got presents. And Sasha's uncle from our time came down and wore Santa Claus. The real one, obviously. Um, and at this point, <laughs> the Cherry Tree Project was us, me and Nigel and St. Chad's and our time in the Romley Life Centre and Stockport Council's local fund and Asta and Refresh Marple and this massive group of teenagers. And then in March, along came COVID. <laughs> so everything that we'd built up over this period of time was suddenly squished. Everything had to close. We had to start something new and we were part of a community that was struggling. And we felt that because of our social media and we'd built this network through the parents that we had an opportunity to do something. So we actually started by posting out on our social media that we could shop for you. Is there anything that we can get you? If we've not got it, we'll just find it. And the local businesses came together and did a food collection and gave it all to us. Um, so we actually had something there that we could help people with. Um, St. Chad's have got this huge hall that they let us take over because they couldn't use it for anything. And the Life Centre, in Romilly, they wanted to feed people, um, but didn't necessarily know the right people, didn't know the people that we've been working with. And then with the support, that was when we first met Jen. From Morrison's. So we met Jen at Morrison's and she came along and first of all, she filled our car boot with fruit and we went and delivered it all over the place. And then next thing she filled it with eggs and fruit and everyone got really excited about eggs. And then she just gave us more and more and we suddenly had all this food. And we started providing food parcels every week. Um, Allied Bakery gave us bread. Morrison's gave us food. Astor had given us stuff. Different places stepped in and supported us. And then over, so since March, we've yeah. not been the group we planned to be. We've been, we've been something that grew naturally. And the support of other people has, has took us to places that we never, ever would have expected. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of points. In our little breakup group, we were just talking about um, people wanting to help and wanting to collaborate but not knowing where and literally us saying look if you, we'll go shopping for people or we'll deliver them food got about four or five local shops to say well will you use us as a collection point and we'd go around and we get cars full of cars full of food because they then knew because someone had offered to do something where they could um where they could step in I think sometimes people don't realise how much something quite small can really, really benefit you. Like um, last night, someone gave me a retweet and the retweet that was given meant that two massive like, Manchester businesses contacted me last night to say they want to donate us food and about five people donated to the GoFundMe and that was a retweet. And so we were suddenly in a position where we were able to do this for others. Others were able to do this for us. And it all started because we wanted to go out and we wanted to do something. And then people just joined in and came along for the adventure. And should we, should we introduce Jen now? What do you think? Where's, where's, Jen? where's Jen from Morrison's? Take yourself off mute and um, come and say hello and introduce yourself to the group. Hi, <laughs> I'm Jen from Morrison's. Um, Thanks, Nigel. Thanks, Rachel. Oh, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> so with COVID hitting, we obviously created a food bank and we had a lot of produce that was um, not necessarily out of date, but it was still usable. And it's knowing where to give it to or where to take it. We got in contact with Rachel through, um, I think Darren got a hold of Rachel's contact from somewhere. 
and it's just been something that's obviously spiraled out a lot more because obviously we've got through to our time and there's lots of things now that's good because obviously we know we're helping back in the community and we're helping local people basically so yeah that's Jen's me. awesome what people don't know about Jen is that I think lots of companies and organizations have something that they kind of have to give in order to tick a box and that's that's not Morrison's and that's certainly not Jen because the thing is with Jen is Jen built a relationship with us and she knows where to send the right stuff in order for it to have the biggest impact. I mean, we've had days where we've put something on social media that we're struggling with and then the next day it's appeared by magic. But what's actually happened is that Jen just keeps an eye out and she just steps in. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of things. There's, there's Morrison's and we are grateful to Morrison's, but there's also Jen as a person. So Jen also interacts with, with the charity project with the Fit and Fed. And because Jen is, is involved in the Fit and Fed with us, she knows what we're going to be cooking the next week. It's an online cooking show for those that don't know what we do. Um, so she's also kind of one step ahead. So, you know, J Jen is then, it, it, it's just, it's, it's people. You know, we, we, we talk, there's organisations, so again, in our breakup room, we were talking about funders, at, you know, the National Lottery, how scary, you know, big faceless organisation, but actually Morrison's is a massive organisation, but to us it's Jen, and it's that relationship with that individual who we can call upon, or who will call upon us. And I think that's what's made a massive difference. We've, um, over through since March so over the summer and just I know we started with that we're just Rachel and Nigel we genuinely we're in the process of opening a community cafe but right now we are Rachel and Nigel working from our living room and everything else that we do is just a collection of the people um that are around us and it's this community that makes a difference so and obviously we didn't have loads of money behind us everything that we've done hasn't been us we've just facilitated it it's all come from other people so since march we have we've done over 100 um, over 1500 food parcels 3000 packs of ingredients over 12000 meals including 300 christmas dinners which was which awesome is, uh, but don't I mention would. it around jen because with the chicken fiasco and she's still having nightmares about it um activity packs homeschooling packs birthday party packs pumpkins yeah uh, goodie bags and so much more, because right now the Cherry Tree Project is me and Nigel and St. Chad's and our time in the Romley Life Centre, um, Stockport Council, Asda, loads of teenagers, um, Morrison's, Ally Bakeries, Greg's, One Stop, Romley Butchers, Wave of Change, um, Manchester Airport, Manchester United, uh, Romley Lions, Stockport Road to Raid, the WI, the Vernon Pilton Society, Sector 3, um, Stockport Homes, Pure Innovations, Fair Share, Marcus Rashford, um, loads, of, <laughs> loads of local businesses. I can see Inga's in the room with SAS Media, Stockport Samaritans, and we've created this huge family. And this family that we've created, I really hope has benefited them, but it's so, so benefited us. Can we, have we got, we've got Katie in the room, haven't we? Thank you, Rose. So our friend Katie um, is from St. Chad's, the first person to ever collaborate with us. Um, also massive relationship with the Life Centre. Do you want to, have you got anything that you want to add? Um, yeah, I just find that, I mean, those people that know Nigel and Rachel just know that they are an inspiration, but they're an inspiration for um, many reasons. They are always trying to do themselves out of a job, so they're not ever trying to take over stuff. They're always trying to give stuff. So to be that conduit of, of blessing to the community and to other people, to be empowering and um, to give people, particularly at this time of COVID, when people have lacked, um, for some people, a purpose um, that's been changed. Um, Nigel and Rachel have been able to provide a purpose for many, many people that have been a little bit lost with so many changes. But it's in our group, Pam said that collaboration works on many different levels. And we see that with uh, the charity project. We see the collaboration right at the grassroots with the young people to write up to the celebrities and Nigel's friend, Marcus Rashford and Fairshare. You know, the, <laughs> the TV shows that Nigel doesn't get on. You know, there's all sorts of stuff. 
that uh, the collaboration is at every single level. And as much as I um, work with them from a distance, um, from my dining room table, um, just to be part of something that is multiplying and being able to bless and change people's lives. And I, I don't say that um, lightly, it really does change people's lives, um, what they're doing. So I'm, I'm very proud to call them my friends, but also I get to, I get to play as well uh, at times <laughs> when I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Katie, thank you, bless Katie. you we love you Katie um, the Cherry Tree Project is a collection of people it's not just us, it's a collection of people that have come together to work towards a common goal and to make a difference together and we've become a community in ourselves we've learned through the Cherry Tree Project we've learned that Jen from Morrison's absolutely hates being on camera but that if you ask her nicely she will um, and that Sasha could have fun in a box and if you met any young person in the whole of Stockport and just tell them that you're friends with Sasha they'll be nice to you. Um, we've learned that if you need anything at all ask Simone and she knows the person that she can point out to you um, and that you should always say yes if Fair Share asks you for a favour because you never know Marcus Rashford might just be loading your car boot on TV um, and that we've got the best church family and support network in the whole world and we just wouldn't have got through it without the people that we've got around us but I think the thing that we've learned most and we sat down and we said if we were going to define collaboration and what we think the most important thing has been to us is that we believe and we think and the way that we've really tried to do things is that collaboration works best when everyone as part of it focuses more on what they can give than what they're able to relate to receive and that they realize that they all have something to give and that a shall, like a, a someone to lean on and a little bit of advice is more valuable than like the biggest funding pots in the world because without these people around you or without those people who give you a retreat tweet or tells you that you can do it when you're not feeling confident or point you in the right direction you can't spend this funding you you can't get anywhere without, where without these small things and um, when you walk in it together the smallest journeys really do become adventures and so like massive thank you to, to this network because this was the first place we came um and this has made this has been a massive game changer for us i mean i'm looking around the room now and there's so many people in this room that we've worked with in, in fact do you want to give us a wave if you've if you've collaborated with us in even a small way give us a wave <laughs> because this is how fortunate we are there's so many of you in the room that we've worked with in some way shape or form and I think that that's probably what I want to end with is that my challenge to you guys today is to leave today um, with a new relationship. Leave today finding somebody that you can give something to, even if it's just that you go away and you just totally bash someone's Twitter and send it all over the show, whatever it might be go away today being able to bless somebody else because we are so blessed to be part of this group and the reason why we've got it is so we can bless others so yeah thanks for having us and putting up with us yeah thank you guys amazing thank you um and i'm sure everyone will join me in just i think you know you two as well it's kind of that collaboration happens because it kind of it doesn't really matter what people have got to bring or give. You'll find kind of a way to have that conversation. And I think it's just what you said at the very beginning. It's the ability to build relationships. It's not kind of going in straight away with an ask. We need this. It's just having a conversation and seeing where it goes. You're absolutely inspirational as, as, as is happening in the chat. You'll have to read that. Lots of lovely things for you. Um, I've got a quick question for Jen before we have a break um, and if people want to think about questions and come back after the break with that so you've got a chance to have a brew um, but Jen if she's here from Morrison's I'd like to know from a business perspective if there's been kind of any surprising uh, benefits to uh, you and your work colleagues and Morrison's about getting involved in stuff in the community sorry my doorbell going off <laughs> um, a lot more obviously through the cherry tree project a lot more staff have um also volunteered and helped um because when i was packing the bags last thursday um, a staff member turned up and i said oh what are you doing here you should all come to volunteer um i've obviously speaking for a lot of staff they're volunteering helping delivering bags so i think it's it's all about giving back to the community and knowing your community 
because obviously with COVID it's happening, you're kind of just sticking to your job and getting your job done. But I think people are realising more to get out more and help out with the community and getting to know the community a bit more. So yeah, and I've only been in this job role um, since last Christmas, so it's all new to me. And obviously I was just getting into the role and then COVID hit. So it is about getting to know my community and like getting to know my local um, charities, schools. So yeah, but it's just about getting out really. Brilliant. Thanks, Jen. And I think that's kind of at the one of the the things that I kind of say to businesses is that, you know, it's as beneficial to you as it is to the voluntary community group when you get involved. And sometimes there can be surprising benefits to that. Um, so so it's good to kind of hear that you, that's what you're finding, that it's engaging your staff and giving them some kind of purpose and connection to their community as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, so if you want to think about questions, I'm going to shave five minutes off your break, if that's all right. <laughs> so just five minutes to grab a brew. And if we're all right to come back, it's just gone one minute past. So it's six minutes. So, um, thank you very much for your discussion time. And I hope that you met some new people and had a chance to have a good chat. Um, if you... If the facilitators now would be able to feed back um, to the room a couple of things that was a top topic of conversation. Do you want Inga? feedback from both hey, groups? Mark, you go first, great. Do you want feedback from both groups? Just feedback from the, the last one. What Some key yeah. theme stuff. Obviously, I mean, what one thing one thing that did come across was the importance of making sure we share appropriate information and people being honest and open about what we can do and how we can work in collaboration. What we did also, I thought was really valuable, was the smaller groups out there that maybe not reaching the community due to not being able to access social media cost, et cetera. And it's about support working together with other organizations who may be able to support you with that. Great so stuff. I what really came across from what, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, should we go to the other Mark? Because I can see him on my screen. Is that me? This yeah, Mark? that's you. Um, Mark, Mark right. too. <laughs> Happy days, man on his desert island. Um, we uh, There was lots of really, really great things out of our group. There's, there's so many, I can't mention them all. So I'm going to quickly dive in on uh, something Nicola in our group said, which was... Um, having um, some, some of the barriers to um, collaboration is groups that don't have a clear um, pitch or a clear idea of what they're going to ask. So you need a really clear ask and also go into it with your eyes open and respect the people that you're asking and understand what their limits might be. And that was actually linked to something that another member of the group said, which is could Sector 3 help with developing a template of, of offers and asks that can be circulated and available that um, the business community can see and the groups can see and it's easy to access. And one final one, which will put a smile on your face uh, or both uh, you and Joe, which is more sector three. Everyone said more sector three. Really, really, really good. These events are the lifeblood of cooperation and collaboration, especially when we're all in celebrity squares like this. If anybody remembers the 70s, yay, celebrity squares. Um, and it's it's kind of, we've got we've to keep talking. Um, yeah, I'm going to shut up now. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. That's great. Uh, I think that's really important what you said about kind of being open to stuff as well. Uh, Inga, you're, I can see you. Hi, yeah, I can see you <laughs> I'm on my mic. <laughs> I'm not talking and I'm in a mood. Um, ours was mainly very interesting. It's sort of looking further down when collaboration is sort of ending up that one party is doing all the work and it's getting really tough. You get volunteers dropping out or other um partners dropping out or people not turning up and you ending up picking up uh, all the work. So a lot of the conversation was around this and I su suppose it's highlighted even more through COVID, isn't it? It makes it difficult. So one of the things we were wondering if this is actually something as Sector 3 we could look into, just sort of some support to, you know, how to deal with situations like this, maybe not to get into 
situations where you end up carrying all the responsibility yourself uh, yeah. in the first place, sort of delegation and that's sort of what we've talked about. So, yeah, so like the challenges and I think Becky's on the call who does a great free group on Facebook about um, black belt in boundaries, Becky, wherever she is. I'm sure she can tell a few people about that at some point. Uh, was there anything else, Inga? No, that was mainly it. And just, yeah, just sort of highlighting again, you know, how important it is. Just listen and trust and hum humility as well. Massive. Yeah. OK. And one I would like to add to that as well is kind of communication and thanks, because I think there's that yeah. thing that people get asked things and then they never really hear whether anything came of it. And we all we all want to know whether it made a difference, don't we? So I think it's kind of communicating that back, but mm -hmm. also kind of a quick nod to say thank you for helping me with that or thank you for that. Because people are more likely to come and support you again. Great stuff. Yeah. Um, Henrika, I can't see you, but I know you're there somewhere. I think she's there somewhere. I am. I am here. <laughs> Sorry, I was just making loads of notes from uh, what Inga was saying. Just, yeah. So we'll we'll keep, keep um, it. Yeah, really important things. Um, we actually had quite a lot of offers um, in our in our uh, um, breakout room, so we have Kitch Republic, um, who do uh, kind of interior design things, and we oh, had a conversation homewares. about homewares. Thank you um, about merchandise, maybe for some um, some of the other groups, so they could, you know, there's there's an offer of having a conversation about that that they could do do all. To, Lampshades, uh, chopping boards, mugs. I can big Kitch Republic up because for our Wave of Change programme with my other uh, activity hat on, we had lots of Wave of Change mugs made so that when people were on Zooms, they could have their Wave of Change mug and their brew and Angela was very reasonably priced. Um, so yeah, great, great local company to work with. Um, and we had an offer from the Beautiful Inc about uh, the they've got a very central location um, that people could rent rooms um, it, you know once we are allowed to see each other again yeah. <laughs> but yeah. even with social distancing I reckon about 20 25 people um, could could fit into the the room that they have for um, for rent so that's that was a, a really good offer as well. And we had one from uh, the credit union as well. So I think it was the whole, do you all know what the credit union is? If you don't, please <laughs> uh, message Claire. And uh, and just the offer that uh, a lot of people that we, that might be finding it difficult to get credit from normal banks and uh, to contact them and, and yeah. So right. it's just kind of passing that information on to people you work with. Yeah, so I suppose yeah. as well that kind of sums up collaboration is in the strangest places. <laughs> it might be space, it might be resources, it could be anything. Brilliant. Marie? Thank you. So we saw um, two really good um, evidence pieces of work of collaboration in the two groups, what I uh, facilitated. So for the second group, um, two things what really came out for us was um, shared values. Um, it's about, you know, being open, being honest uh, and letting that idea organically grow, you know. And one of the things what we talked about as well was um, barriers in, in regards to barriers was, you know, it doesn't matter what sector you're coming from, whether that's a charity, whether that's a private sector, you know, it's there's nothing in it for them. They want to actually help and support. Um, and a lot of the uh, chat in our room was, you know, they get judged on if you're a private sector, what is it in for them? But actually all they want to do is help and enhance what, what the offer is. So um, yeah, that was, that was felt really, really strongly. Another thing was, you know, that social uh, platform where, where can we go to find uh, information? Because if the general public struggle and, they, and, and our group struggles, then, you know, that's a massive barrier. More of the sector connector, as Mark said, that's a real um, find and, and, and a strength. 
um, and as a whole, um, you know, we, we we sort of like introduced each other to everyone, and you know, made real connections in that in that room. So I think another strong thing was building on them relationships, and it's you know, it's about who's here, you know, and, and all tap into each other while you've got the opportunity. Yeah, and thanks, Marie. And I think that's kind of really key, isn't it? We're so busy doing the doing that it's like we go to things like this, but do we make time for that follow up? And that's even come across in some of the business groups that I'm involved in that. Um, there are lots of offers of support and things, but sometimes it's carrying that conversation to the next space rather than outside an event. So thanks for sharing that. Claire. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So some of the some of the stuff that's already been fed back, little bits of that came up in our groups as well. But two of the other things that um, that came up, one was about sort of the imposter syndrome side of things. Because especially if you're a very small sort of community group or if you're quite new, if you're sort of like in a space with perhaps a big sort of professional organisation, sorry, Justin's trying to escape again, um, <laughs> that sometimes if you're there and maybe your community group is only one or two people or if you're quite new, if you're quite small, you can kind of feel maybe that you don't have anything to offer. So recognising that even though you might be a small organisation, that it might be, it could be the lived experience of, of yourselves or the people that you sort of work with, or it might be the things that you can offer or the tools that you've got, or there's lots of different ways, but it's very common when you're quite small to think, oh, I'm only small and put yourself in a space with these big professional organisations that we can sort of diminish ourselves a little bit. So when it comes to collaboration, we need to make sure that we sort of overcome that a little bit so that we don't we don't stop ourselves from offering um, what we can give to other people. And the second one um, was a, a really good point that um, I can remember his surname, but I can't remember, Graham in our group. Um, and he was talking about the idea of what sort of understanding sort of what what we need to receive from the people that we're perhaps trying to support so for example if you're working in a community group and you're helping a particular group of people it's not swanning in there and saying right i can help you with this and then showing them everything we've got to offer it's about getting the information from them about actually what do they really need not what do we think you need what do you really need and to get to know them and to get that information from them before you wade in there and say, right, I can help you with this. Well, maybe the thing that you're offering to help them with might not be the thing that was the problem. So the idea of making sure that we sort of learn enough about the people that we want to work with or to help before we wade in there with our sort of like super duper hero hat on to be able to actually, what is the problem? So that we, we know that we're actually meeting that need. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's massive, Claire. Thanks for raising that. Uh, Catherine. Yes, I'm here. Um, all right. Well, I, we had a really good group and they we've talked about a, a lot of what everybody's already mentioned. Um, things like, obviously, honesty, everybody being honest, um, trust. You know, there was an experience in our group where um, somebody felt that trust had been broken. So we talked about, you know, how would you how would you get through that? Because um, obviously that can that can damage things quite a lot. And it's trying to build back from there. Um, we did have an example of a really of something really positive. It was the men's mental health group with I think Sarah and Chris were in that. Um, and they'd had really good results because it was very clear the shared purpose and goal. Every, they had a platform where everybody could be heard. Um, there's people take away actions those are everything happens and it's also reviewed regularly as well um and yeah things were being put into practice they could people could see the results so they were then investing in it again i just thought that was that was a really great example there um again uh shared visions shared goals the, the thing that that i found interesting was you know maybe you don't be afraid of asking for help um so very much about you as a person. Yes, there's the organisations, but what about you as a person? Um, I, I think it's important to take the time to, to learn about yourself. Um, things like, you know, don't overstretch yourself. There might be lots of things you want to achieve, but is overstretching yourself, is that gonna, is that gonna help or is that gonna hinder things? Um, 
they'll be frightened of asking for help. People have found that having Sector Connector and yourself, Simone, you know, you're somewhere for people to go to to go, well, how do I, how, who do I talk to when I've got this problem and who can, who can help me with this? Um, that's a lot of people to come and ask you. So if there's somewhere, a platform where people can go and know that they can get help. Um, so yeah, one of the questions was, you know, where can I go to get support? Um, and I, yeah, I thought that was really important that it's don't forget yourself and know your limits, um, but also know your, uh, have your expectations as well. Brilliant, thanks for sharing that, Catherine. Um, I now the last group, I think is the last group. Thad was having a few tech issues. So sorry, Rachel, for zooming you in and moving you from another group. So I don't know whether Thad or Rachel Robert Newton want to uh, feed back on their group. Yes, no, I mean, pretty much covered what everyone else has said. There's some really good stuff there. I think, I think for us, um, again, it was around communication, uh, leadership, um, you know, having that shared, shared values and a common goal that has been touched on. And some of the uh, that holistic approach, understanding what's in the community and accessing those resources and provision. And some of the worries that certain services and organisations have is that when, when, when we're in, within collaboration, that sometimes you lose some of that control. That you, and I think Catherine just touched on that with her group as well, that you, you lose some of that control, which can be di difficult. So you have to have that trust. And I think Henry, uh, Henry Carrara, you mentioned trust as well. Um, but yeah, really good, really good stuff. Fantastic. Right. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve's reminded me. I, sorry, Steve, I can look just looking at what. So we've got Steve is the last group. Yeah, sorry, I thought you were going to... I had to ask you to do a job, Steve, and then uh, leave you out. I'm so rude. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was going to have to make it up anyway. Uh, <laughs> but as it happens, I think we've got a couple. Um, one is, um, uh, I suppose, good practice, or one, uh, a bit of a challenge. Uh, in terms of good practice, we discussed that when collaborating, it's really important to set a clear goal um, and a desired outcome. You know, when collaborating, it's too easy to get pulled in different directions, perhaps in the direction of, uh, of one of the more dominant members of, a, of a, a collaborative effort. And it is really important at the outset to define what that target is uh, um, and try and stick to it where possible uh, for the benefit of all. Um, in terms of the challenge, I think it's one that we've all experienced, I guess. Um, and, and I'll come to the kind of how we define collaboration, but it's how much can I give? You know, quite often, particularly in our network, we're asked to uh, join uh, and, and support each other, different networks, different subgroups almost. And there is that question that we all have to ask is how much of my time can I give at the expense of, of what I'm trying to do for the organisation? So it's important not to detract and, and again, that's, that's a decision only you can make, but sometimes we, we offer too much of ourselves up at the expense of, of, of what we do. Um, yeah, and just a point on that, Steve, I think that's important that we feed back to the people who are asking us to do that, that we need to be building budgets in for these steering groups and stakeholder groups, and you want a piece of our experience and our knowledge, um, then, you know, there should be a value to that. Yeah, and I think just an important distinction maybe when we look at collaboration is we, we, we tended to focus on collaboration being just that. Sometimes people lean on our sector for support and, you know, and it can be quite a challenge versus actually the positives of connection, which has come up in some of the other comments, is actually how important it is to try and find routes yeah. to connect, particularly when you're starting out. Um, you know, and, and, and groups, you know, this network in particular has been invaluable, I know, from my own experience. I will say that we did have a, a, a blossoming relationship uh, with, with Julia from Signpost and Sean from Sorted. I felt like Fred from First Date, so that was quite good. Um, so hopefully there's something there they can report back on the next session. Oh, uh, brilliant. Yeah, that's all from us. That's lovely to hear. Great stuff. Um, I am aware we're running a little bit over. Thank you so much for... Um, feeding into all that. We have got a couple of more key speakers. Um, so I, th I thought the, the reason I asked Joe from Sector 3 to come and talk about funding and the reason I've asked Laura Frost from Clark Nicklin to come and talk about the Stockport Business Awards is that stuff that I said at the beginning about mutual benefit and that 
you know, sometimes there are benefits to collaboration that we might not necessarily see. So I'm going to leave Jo on that point if she is still around, hopefully. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Um, Great. Can I share my screen? Yeah, you should be able to share. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for inviting me, um, Simone, to talk about a bit around collaborating for funding. Um, I'm Jo McGrath. I run Sector 3, and we came about as a collaboration of voluntary community and social enterprise sector organisations, really. Um, and, you know, it's been fun along the way. It's been an interesting journey. But, you know, we, we've, we've got here... Um, and if anybody wants to hear the history or kind of understand a bit more about sector three, then do contact me outside of here. But um, so I'm just going to go through some of the things that funders are kind of looking at at the moment and why. Um, and hopefully this will help you shape further funding bids in the future. So why encourage collaboration? <clears throat> well, there's not much money around or there's at least there's money around but there's not there's less to go around you know we're in a global pandemic our organizations are suffering <clears throat> we're seeing an increase in um, demand on our services um, and and actually there's quite a lot of people that who didn't apply for grants that are now applying and um, because their traditional face-to-face -face fundraising has just not been possible so um, there is an increased competition around getting access to grants um, and really funders want to see projects that really build on networks and collaborations. They don't want to see any waste or duplication in communities um, and they want to see more return on their investment. So um, funders are very keen on understanding what the need is and how you know what the need is of communities um, and can just one organisation meet that need? probably not so if you can demonstrate who you're working with why you're working with them and what value that'll bring um, it will stand you um, heads, head and shoulders above other organizations potentially who are going for the same funding and like I say fun, fun, funders absolutely want you to maximize the impact and improve outcomes and reach more people and um, working collaboratively does mean that you can get improved outcomes and you can reach more people so for example you might be like developing um, a domestic violence prevention um, intervention in in Brunnington okay you've, you've spent so much time developing this service and this model you know it works you've evaluated it it's amazing you're getting great outcomes so could that model be taken to say Hazel Grove um, potentially it could you could reach more people but what I would say is that, you know, you need to then look at who in Hazel Grove you could work with. Um, you know, you don't want to reinvent the wheel elsewhere and you don't want to waste time and energy, but you also don't want to um, put people's noses out. You've got to show people respect in those neighbourhoods, those people that are close to those communities. So what I would say is I wouldn't parachute in with um, a, a service into an area that you're not familiar with. I'd really get to know those people on the ground and those people that you're working with. Um, and start to develop maybe a bid with them rather than as an afterthought. Um, you know, you've just got to treat other people and organisations with respect. And that's that's why collaborations kind of can break down um, when that respect isn't shown and people aren't listening. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Collaboration can maximise impact, but just be careful on how you approach that, I guess. Yeah, avoid duplication. Funders don't want to see people... Um, you know, creating the same things in the same area. For example, you know, if, if 10 of us from Stockport went in individually to the lottery and wanted to set up a, a, a platform to connect people, um, it wouldn't look good. You know, how can we collectively pool our resources and, and, and put a bid in that, you know, sort of avoids duplication. I think collaboration is a really good way to encourage diversity and equality of opportunity. I think, um, you know when you're entering into a project and you want to deliver something in the community you really want to try and ensure that you don't exclude people and we've got in stock but we've got some brilliant um equality networks we've got nexus we've got forward we've got disability stockport and they're all close to those communities they've all got a reach into those diverse communities so if you're looking to work with people from diverse communities then engage them engage these organizations and um, funders will love that they'll, they'll love that collaboration 
the love that you're um and also like on that point is don't just use them <laughs> pay for them to be involved you know could you put in your bid um, some money for some outreach work for these organizations to do some of that groundwork um, to enable you to reach as many people as possible if you have more diverse reach you will get better outcomes that's for sure and you'll definitely have happy funders You can use this as well in um, collaboration to build the sustainability of your organisation. You know, do you really need to pay for that office? Do you really need to pay for that training course? Um, you know, collaborating with other organisations means that you can spot those opportunities to um, share resources, um, whether that's physical, intellectual, you know, people. You know, it could be that you've got some, someone's got a really great trustee um, that you could call upon um, in your organisation. And you just really, um, collaboration just helps to you to, yeah, sustain your organisation. You're not just chasing after funding, after funding, after funding. I suppose you're sort of building your dream team around you. It's a really good way to um, improve the awareness of your cause or the mission that you're trying to achieve and increase um, kind of visibility of your organisation. If you're a small um, organisation operating on the grassroots, it's really good way um, to get in front of funders if you go in as part of a, a, a wider funding bid. So um, you might not as an organisation have the headspace or the time or capacity to kind of directly bid into the National Lottery. But is there other organisations that are bidding into the National Lottery that you could be part of that offer and be part of? And you can just, you know, grow your awareness. And like um, I think Claire was saying before, you know, so people can see your value, what you bring, the kind of reach you've got as a grassroots organisation. So there's lots of um, wins to be had being part of that collaboration. Um, you know, it, this work is so isolating sometimes, you know, particularly in the pandemic and particularly because we can't actually just see or, you know, be around each other. So collaborating can really help you feel less isolated and um, you can find people that have got the skills that maybe you haven't got in your team and you can use that opportunity in, in a collaborative way to kind of learn new skills and build your confidence around skills that you might have but you you kind of that imposter syndrome type of thing and um, so you know just you can create your own dream team you know there might be just two of you you know you might be Nigel and Rachel working in um in you know for the cherry tree project but actually look at their web of um, people and organizations that they engage with and work with it just means that they can just you know use their skills experience and expertise to to basically get um, the, the common goal done and which is supporting their, their, their communities so um i do think also like collaborating provides space to innovate and grow um you know you could perhaps offer a service with another person that perhaps you hadn't really thought of doing before or you felt a bit nervous about doing on your own and um, just having somebody else there to kind of share the risk with um, does help and you know we all want to save money and build our resilience you know how can we share resources how can we make sure that we're not um, duplicating effort and that can only be a good thing so that's a kind of a bit of a whistle stop tour around funders and what, kind of what they're looking for and things to consider but um we've touched on this this morning but i just want to just come up with uh, add to that slightly about how to avoid the pain of collaboration because it can be painful we all know that um it's sometimes it's just so easy just to say oh you know what i'm just going to get the job done on my own i really can't be asked <laughs> with talking to people and working with others so you know it <laughs> In order to avoid that pain, you know, do, do seek out organisations with shared values, people that you actually get on with. And it's not just about the organisation. Like Rachel said about Morrison's, it's not just about Morrison's, it's about the people. It's about your contact there. Um, you know, early on, please identify some common goal or objectives to work towards because then you can keep coming back to that. If things start going wrong, people start going off mission, then at least you can go, actually, we're here for this. Do you remember? This is what we set out at the beginning. So um, I think that's really key. And don't be forced into collaborating with people that you don't want to collaborate with. It should be mutually agreed. Do not be told by a funder or a commissioner to collaborate with somebody. This should come from you. You've got your gut instinct. You've got your, um, you know who you, you work with best. Um, it needs to be mutually agreed. And that's the only way it can work. Don't be forced into it. 
Um, consider starting small and building trust. You know, if you don't feel like being part of a, a, a big collaboration, then, you know, just start building those relationships one to one, you know, a couple of organisations here and there. Um, try testing something with them, some shared collaborative work and build that trust and then you can move on from that. And yeah, set boundaries and working parameters, um, you know, certain things that you definitely won't do um, and certain things that you will do. And I think that's really good when, um, if you can share kind of your values with one another and make sure that everyone's clear that these are some of the things that I really um, wouldn't get involved in or things that are, um, yeah, just set your boundaries. Yeah, ask questions about others. So if you're part of a collaboration with somebody, you're thinking about entering a collaboration, ask some questions, ask around, you know, have you worked with them before? What do you think of them? You know, did that work out good? You know, do some due diligence of your own, you know, don't be afraid. We've got a fantastic network here in Stockport, you know, people work with each other. Just check out how that's going for people, what have people learned and um, don't just jump into something um, and let it blindside you. Um, just check with others and um, we're here to help. So very quickly, uh, yeah, pay and pay, pay respect to people. Yeah, pay people. So don't just um, use people because you want to get a bid in. Um, so you, use, you, know, you might use some of their information that they've spent a lot of time gathering because they've got lived experience. Don't just do that. Please do it authentically. Work with people, pay them for outreach if you want them to do outreach pay them for information or research that they've done if that's what you need and um, that you know we see it happen a lot and it, it's um it might just be because people haven't got time to do that or they haven't got the money to do that but if you're going to put in a bid you know get people around the table early doors and say come on you know what is it we want from this and how can we make sure our time is covered and yeah just respect people so in terms of sector three, how can we help? Um, we are an independent organisation. We've got no hidden agenda. We can act as honest brokers. So if you're thinking about setting up a collaboration and there's other words that people use, coalitions, alliances, consortia, collabs, um, just get in touch with us um, if you want. If you would like a third party to kind of pull that network and that partnership together, we're, we're there to do that. We can do that quite happily. We will we'll facilitate those conversations because sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable for organisations to have that, especially if they're working in the same space. So we're really, um, we, we can act as that kind of um, challenge in a safe way um, and, and uh, sort of get you to where you need to be. And um, we work with a lot of organisations, we know a lot of organisations, we've funded a lot of organisations, we've seen how people work, we can suggest and recommend people that we know and trust. So again, if you're looking for someone to join you on a bid or a partnership, then just get in touch with us and, and we'll, we'll, we can give you um, some good eggs to work with. <laughs> Um, we can support funding bids. Um, we're really happy to review bids and being an independent critical firm, we've done it for a lot of people over the past year and um, it's some success, which is great. So again, just use us for that. If you're thinking of putting a bid in, we're more than happy to have a little look through that and give you some feedback. And yeah, we've got some practical tools as well. I think one of the things around entering collaborations and partnerships, particularly when money is involved, <laughs> um, is about being um, sure and just minimizing the risk that things might go wrong and some of those things are like simple terms of reference so you know it, it's just basically a document we've got templates that you can use off the shelf and we can support you on that and it, it's just basically say right what is it I'm here for what is it I want to achieve and how are we going to get there and how are we going to work together to do that so and partnership agreements and things like that we can we can help with that at sector three and um, it just all serves to provide confidence and make clear the roles and responsibilities for all partners involved there's lots of partnership um funds out there the biggest one i guess is the national lottery partnerships fund and that's um over 10k and um, i know that it's not very well subscribed um so you know there is an opportunity there for stockport based organizations to come together um, and you know, putting a bid to that. Um, again, they're looking for organisations that work together on shared goals. Um, and it could be that, you know, you're collaborating around a particular geography of Stockport, or it could be with people of similar life experiences. Um, and we've got shed loads of <laughs> funding opportunities on the Sector 3 website as well. So um, I've put the link there. And if you want any friendly support and guidance from um, us, 
at sector three and the team's always there so please get in touch and sign up to our bulletin to keep in the know thank you i don't know if i went over time then <laughs> Thanks so much, Joe. That's fantastic. Um, and I also do a couple of days a week at Sector 3 to support. So um, you're in good hands. Me, Joe, there's Laura, who's on the call, who's now taking over the comms and marketing. We've got some support from Will, who's here and up, does a shared role with the council. And Joe is continually adding to the team. So I think you've got an advert out for an accounts person, have you, at the moment? Yeah, we're looking for um, finance and admin um, role. So um, if you know anybody that's looking for and um, to work for a lovely team in Stockport. Um, yeah, get in touch. Great. Are you all right to stop that share, Joe? I can, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, any questions for Joe? Obviously, you've got the information there and in the chat. We will have a little bit of time at the end as well for people who can stay till till lights out <laughs> um but there's plenty of ways to still get hold of us um laura frost are you still around i am Lance Yay! Around. sorry we've run over our schedule and we know how busy you are so the lovely laura frost is from clark nicklin and she is in charge of the stockport business awards every year aren't you laura yeah, yeah so i just wanted to obviously um talk to everyone a little bit about obviously the business awards i'll keep it pretty brief i know um we're running a little bit um over but i just thought it'd be a good idea for obviously me and you simone had a good chat about collaboration and and, and you know stop up business awards is all about collaboration so if anyone who doesn't really know about the awards it's it's obviously an awards events dinner that happens annually um, every year. And it's um, we've been doing it since 2012. So it's been going for quite a while. Um, the reason we at Clark Nicklin set the event up um, was just that there was nothing like that in Stockport back um, years ago that was celebrating the successes of business. Um, and we had networking events, but there was nothing that was bringing everyone together once a year to just kind of, you know, really encourage um, collaboration and making new contacts and just like like I said celebrating obviously um businesses so we set it up in 2012 and it's just really grown ever since it's been really well received by the Stockport community um we've we had to move venues because it was just so big um to accommodate more guests and it's just become a real kind of iconic date for the business calendar really so obviously we had to cancel it last year which was um Pretty devastating but I think everyone fingers crossed is looking forward to this year's event so um as you can imagine it's it's exciting to, to plan this year's and it's a real special event this year because it's our 10 year anniversary so it's 10 years since the first one so so we're really looking forward to it so over kind of the past you know 10 years we've, we've raised thousands of pounds for local charities as well we select a charity partner each year um and, you know, on the night, we just do fundraising and it's just getting loads of businesses within Stockport to donate, whether that's um, a prize, um, you know, a voucher, something, anything at all. Um, and we just raise so much money on the evening, which is great for charities, but it's not only kind of the money that we raise, you know, they get the details from the businesses and they can obviously form their relationships outside outside of the business awards um, and therefore any kind of relationships can continue, fundraising can continue. We do find that a lot of um, businesses take that charity on as their charity partner for their business for that year, which is obviously fantastic. Um, so it does continue once the business awards is over. So it's just a really good platform to get involved in. So like we said, obviously today, um, all about collaboration. Um, and the Business Awards is just built on um, collaboration. Businesses from all sectors come together um, to support and celebrate achievements from the year. Um, and the event couldn't take place without any sponsors or our media partners. Um, you know, we've got big businesses like, you know, Gorvins, Handles Banking that get involved and even smaller businesses like, um, like Platform 81, um, they get involved and sponsor. And it's, it's really good for them to you know, if they've won award previously to then go on to sponsor because it just kind of raises their profile a little bit more. We've partnered with Strawberry Radio this year and um, collaborating with them on some, obviously some promotion of the event. So we'll get sponsors in and, and they can obviously talk on the radio. So it's a good opportunity for them to promote their business. Um, and we will obviously speak to, you know, entries and charity partners. They'll have a bit of their time as well. So it's a really good chance for you know, people to, to get on the radio and, and have a bit of a platform there as well. So, 
So really, really good. Um, there's a range of sectors and sizes of organisations that enter. So whether businesses are entering, you know, a business of the year over five million or like a, the most promising young business, it doesn't really matter how big your business is. Um, there's plenty of, of different categories. So the ones that I kind of think are probably more relevant and want to talk about more today is the um, kind of not-for-profit organisation. So the award for not, best not-for-profit organisation um, can be obviously entered by any organisation that's not for profit. Um, and we've also got an award for corporate social responsibility. So this is kind of more of a responsible business award. Um, so this can just be if you've been involved in, you know, well-being of staff, obviously charity fundraising, um, you know, reduction of carbon footprint. So it's those are kind of the main ones that I suppose are, you know, more relevant for businesses um, that may be involved today. But if you do go on our website, there's there's loads of loads of different categories. We've got 13 altogether, and there is kind of something for for everybody. Anyone that's been um, involved in the business awards before, um, as always, just said it's a great platform to get noticed. Um, the impact of winning. Um, or becoming charity partner or sponsoring has just had really positive outcomes um, on the contacts they've made of really kind of built on with relationships with businesses and there's been a lot of collaboration outside of the awards just from obviously making contacts on the night so it's all all really positive um, I suppose from an internal point of view um, and why people want to enter an award you know really good for staff morale um, boosting motivation, celebrates achievements of the business. I think everyone's so busy working really hard and they don't really stop and um, think about all the good work they're doing. Um, so it's good to kind of just stop and, and have a, a bit of a pat on the back, which I think, you know, we rarely, rarely do. Um, and not only will it raise your profile, um, you'll create new contacts in the business community um, and it can also attract and retain staff. And I just you know, I think it's, it's just a really good accolade to have um, on people's websites. Um, so just quickly, how can you get involved? So like I mentioned, we've got 13 categories. Um, these are all available um, on the website, so I won't go, we'll go through everything. We're updating this at the moment and we're going to release some more information on Friday. Um, so Simone, I'm sure we'll pass my information around. So if anyone wants um, any information, um, just obviously get in touch with me. Um, this year's awards will be on the Thursday, the 30th of September, um, and it will also be at Stockport Town Hall again. Um, like I mentioned, it's our 10 year anniversary, so obviously it's going to be, um, hopefully, if it can go ahead with everything that's going on, um, it will be really special and we're trying to make it as obviously big as, as possible and get as many different charities involved because obviously it's been 10 years since the awards, so more information on that all will come out soon. So. Entries will be opening in April um, and you can keep an eye on our website and um, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and we've got a YouTube, which we release videos on um, and obviously Facebook as well. So that's just a bit of a brief overview of obviously what's happening with the awards at the moment. So if you do have any questions, obviously let me know and Simone can obviously pass on the details. Um, but yeah, just thanks for listening. Great stuff. Thanks, Laura. And I think from the conversations we had, there was quite a bit of people feeling like they had to be a charity to go for the, um, is it, do you call it not-for-profit? I can't remember what yeah, the Yeah, that's not for organisation. Yeah, so they don't have to be a charity, no, do they? No. no, not at all, not at all. It can, anyone that falls into the, the not-for-profit sector um, can enter. Um, and we've also got awards, you know, like innovation. So if you are uh, a not-for-profit or, you know, some kind of enterprise that has really been innovative, that is something that people can, can get involved in. It's, it's all about telling your story and having a platform to, you know, get in front of people. So it's, um, it's definitely a, a good opportunity and it's free to enter. So you're not losing anything. And a great way to celebrate all the great things that are happening in Stockport, yeah. So I'm going to throw the floor. Thad, do you want to say anything? And then anybody else? Um, I, I suppose it, um, I suppose I was, I was going to, I suppose it just leaves me to just say uh, thank you, I suppose, for everyone that's attended today. Um, uh, in particular, Claire, Claire and Steve. Uh, they've been fantastic, and of course the uh, facilitators and Simone and Enrique and Will. I think um, what we've witnessed during the lockdown is just how much we can achieve when we work together. 
um, when we connect with each other. And, and that by working together, we will not only be COVID-19, but um, we will come out even stronger than before. As we begin to um, emerge from our imposed hibernation, so to speak, we may have a richer understanding of, of what really matters and what's important to us. Uh, what really matters for the future is not the fact that you attended this event. Um, what really matters for the future is how you, you build on what you've seen and heard here. And what really matters is, is what you do to further innovate and collaborate with each other. And we know the challenges that brings. For instance, where do we even start? Well, today I, I feel as if we're at that starting point and it's been fantastic to, to listen to what people have had to say and some of the ideas they had and some of the work that's already, already, already happening. So, so for me, I, to, to, I'd just like to say um, thank you for inviting me today and, and being able to listen to um, some of the fantastic things that's happening in Stockport. Yeah, I agree. Super inspiring. And I think it's that thing, isn't it, about continuing to be inspired what other people are doing. We don't have all the answers, do we? But um, connecting up to help to figure that out. And I can see that some people have started to use the chat um, to put in things that they need help with. So their asks, people are putting offers in about things they can help with who they want to connect with. So if you want to spend the next couple of minutes either talking to me about it and putting it out there um or if you want to put it in the chat if you feel more comfortable uh like i say we'll save that steve's made a good point about sharing who was at the meeting yes we will thanks steve for the nudge we will let everybody in the meeting know who's been here today so if you want to pick back up on those um connections you can obviously only people will be included who ticked the right box when they registered that what they were happy for their details to be shared gdpr and all that sad see i'm doing it <laughs> so um yeah so if you've said that you're happy for your details to be shared they'll be shared between everybody who um is around today has anyone got anything they want to say um, i'd like to yeah i'd like to say um it's my first um, Sector 3 connector that I've joined. I don't know how many there have been, but I've sort of thought, oh, no, no, it'll all be very technical. and ugh. But I, I've found it really helpful. and It's given me um, a bit of a boost to, to get going again, I think. Okay. I think I've sort of been in a bit of a fallow patch. Yeah, so uh, thanks to the organisers and all the speakers and to the um, facilitators. Oh, Great. that's so lovely to hear, thanks. Is it Sarah or Sarah? Either. <laughs> you go by either. Well, it's so lovely to have you here. And I think it's such a big deal, isn't it, to kind of come to something, especially considering this is a 70 plus person one, you know, and put yourself out there. And I really appreciate that you've also you know, taking the time to figure some of the tech out. And if you do want any help, Sarah, with that after this, so if there's things that you'd like to learn that will um, assist you, I, I can be in touch with you. And, and we've got a, a, a digital guru, Claire, <laughs> with a Justin Timberlake yeah. CV. I've, I've noticed <laughs> someone is offering help. Um, yeah. In the chat. So we can always help with things like that. Thanks for sharing that. Is there anyone else who's got anything they want to... Bring to the Let us know if you've got any ideas for um, future Sector Connector as well. Any feedback, anything like that, I'll put, I'll put our email address there. And, but yeah, you make these events, so please um, share your thoughts and reflections. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to be fair, if I'd have got round to the Jamboard, it felt like I was squeezing too much in. But if we could maybe add that to the evaluation, what do people want? next that'd be brilliant it's lovely to have had you here Hayley thank you um so Hayley saying if anyone's got a group or service that supports el the elderly community and would like to get in touch and discuss working together over a virtual coffee she has put her email in the chat where is Hayley she's always so glamorous I feel like we should see her <laughs> <laughs> hey, hi. Gorgeous. We always just look like the what I feel like I want to look like. <laughs> oh, <bless laughs> you. Uh, how are you doing? 
Not bad, really good. I've just opened the window because it's getting a bit hot in this room, so I've had to turn my mic on mute, so apologies. You're probably going to hear all the traffic going on outside. <laughs> oh, don't worry. So from a business perspective, are these sort of things helpful? Oh, so helpful, yeah, because I think, you know, there's, there's so much that goes on around Stockport, and, you know, I feel like I've, I managed to get myself into quite a few pies, but that, I'm only scratching the surface. There's, there's so much, and I think Stockport especially is wonderful for the connections that it makes and how well we work together and you know the the results that that we produce from from you know the amazing collaborations that we have and you know i just i think these type of things are brilliant uh because there's always always something going on that you're not aware of and it's just it's just great to hear what everybody's doing it's really really beneficial i love them oh good thank you for that and i suppose i'll plug sector three's community soup on friday so if anybody wants to come along to that it's free and um, we ask people to pitch towards a small pot of cash so we've already got the applicants in for that um but you get to watch you get to vote you get to hear what's happening and um, you can book it through the sector three website uh, it's on friday just from two till three but also it gives those groups who are pitching a real boost and, and of encouragement um and what we were saying before about people not always knowing what they've got to offer it helps them to figure that out if they're pitching for some of the cash uh, and we also asked them to give a non-financial ask, so something that everybody in the group in the room can help them with. So really encourage people to come along to that. We're hoping to do more of them. Uh, so there will be an opportunity for people to put themselves forward for that pitching and pot of cash. Um, but I think a couple of people who are on the call, whether they're still here, I don't know. Oh, yes, Marie Joyce from Read Easy. She had our first pot of cash, didn't you, Marie? <laughs> I did, yes. Yeah, we still it, but it's it's enabled us to get started. It was our very very first successful bid, and so we're eternally grateful. Thank you. And Judith from Cheadle Jams here. She's had a bit of the pot. You're on mute, Judith. Sorry, uh, mine's still unspent at the moment because it's going to be some form of little walking group, and I'm waiting till we can have a group that can walk together. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's kind of just, I hope you'd agree, it's kind of about the connection as much as the cash and the people that you meet. It was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. Oh, thanks, Judith. So Joe's put the link in the um, meeting. So I'm going to call it a day there, if, unless there's any final questions. But thank you so much, Steve Flynn. I can see the hand going I'll, up. I'll let you go. No, I don't. Because no one else is going to do it, I, I just thought I should say on behalf of the network, we should really offer you a big thanks for organising today, yourself, Joe uh, and Claire, and obviously from the council, um, you know, past the thousands really, Thad, Henrika and Will and Inger and so on and so forth. So if you're all familiar with your reactions now, we should express uh, <laughs> our gratitude, um, not just for um, today, but obviously for the last difficult few months that we've been uh, you know that we've been experiencing and I think this sector has really come together as Thad said uh, not least because of the support of sector three and, the, and the, the council so big thanks. Oh thanks Steve that's really kind of you. Yeah yeah I, I, I love doing it so <laughs> I think so does everybody else who's involved it's like a pleasure as much as work. Yeah well done everyone who's involved in organising it it's fantastic it's given me a real boost um yeah i needed this <laughs> yeah and i would like to extend a huge thanks to our speakers and thanks rachel and nigel for your awesome presentation i've got it recorded so i'm sure that'll be getting uh, repurposed into some content <laughs> uh and to joe and laura and, and all our facilitators so i'm going to save the chat and leave it there for now but thanks everyone um hope you have a good rest of the day see you later